but this is what happened. Uh, today we were heading to a, a meeting up in John Day, <clears throat> and uh, myself and Buddha, Ammon, were in my Jeep, uh, Lavoy Finnegan's truck, had Lavoy, uh, Ryan Payne, Ryan Bundy, um, Shauna Cox, and an uh, 18-year-old girl that I won't disclose her name. Um, we were riding up 395, <clears throat> and was taking a nap in the back of my Jeep, Buddha and I were just jawing, you know, uh, as we were going through the forest, we happened to look over, and there was approximately 11 heavy-duty, you know, three-quarter ton, one-ton trucks sitting there, you know, all winches and jacked up and, you know, standard HRT trucks, and uh, <clears throat> they whipped out, pulled us over, um, pulled me out of the Jeep first, you know, being a driver, you know, being as tall as I am and such, you know, being armed, yeah, they were a little rougher with me, but it, it, uh, I would be too. Um, then they pulled Ammon out, uh, they pulled uh, Boot out, and then after they had us secured, you know, they radioed ahead that Vehicle 1 was secure, go ahead and proceed with Vehicle 2. At that time, we seen somebody come out of Vehicle 2, didn't know who it was on the passenger side, and they're about 200 yards up. <clears throat> they went to the ground, they were handcuffed, next thing we know, the boy takes off. with his pickup and the other occupants. Um, HRT, of course, pursues. Um, they got further down the road, and we realized there was like a road roadblock about a mile down. Visually, I seen the truck take off. You know, now, I mean, anytime somebody takes off with a vehicle away from law enforcement after they've exercised a stop, it's typically, act, you know, considered an act of aggression and foolish. Um, But he took off. You know, HRT had to chase him. You know, um, I didn't see the shooting. Uh, not dismissing what they did, not dismissing what he did. I don't know. I didn't see it, and I'm not going to speculate on it. Um, you know, they brought the, the girls back down. They split us up. Um, put us all in FBI vehicles. <clears throat> they brought me and the 18-year-old back here to uh, the county facility. Uh, the county sheriff's facility. Uh, everybody else went to Portland to a uh, federal facility. Um, they interviewed me for two hours. You know, they didn't have anything on me. Um, all the people that they picked up, original members of the people that took over the refuge. I wasn't one of them. You know, uh, they asked me, you know, do I belong to a militia? No, no, I'm just up here. You know, it's just standard stupid questions trying to pin me down. And they didn't work. You know, I just kept reiterating to them, that I was just up here sightseeing. I was up here visiting, you know, having a good time. You know, well, why is all the gear in the back of your Jeep? Well, because it's not illegal. So, therefore, I'm doing it. Um, <clears throat> frustrated them enough. You know, uh, they spent two hours. After two hours, dude walked back in, said, here, we're cutting you loose. You know, the best we got on you is trespassing. You know, they didn't have my name in any articles. Uh, the best they had was a few pictures of me out there. Well, congratulations, Goober. Um, so they cut me loose. You know, he thought it was funny that uh, they're going to keep my Jeep for 24 to 48 hours so they can forensically check it. Uh, they're keeping my weapons. Um, they got to run the ballistics on them, serial numbers on them, see who, uh, you know, make sure I'm the rifle owner and they weren't using the commission of a crime or such, whatever, you know, and I might get them back in a month, maybe. I won't. 
Um, walk me out to the arm gate because this place up here, yeah, it's crawling. It's it's packed. This compound, the sheriff's compound, it's packed. 75, 80 vehicles in there. <clears throat> you know, uh, counting probably six Bearcats sitting in there. Um, Oregon State Police have brought in two mobile command centers. They've brought in uh, their forensic, you know, forensic sign or forensic truck. Um, it's packed here. You know, a lot of people at the refuge, they're bailing. Um, makes sense. I mean, it, it, this, it, it's over. You know, this part of this, this game, this part of the stage, it's, it's over. It's, it's time to move on to the next stage. Um, <clears throat> I got hooked up, made a few phone calls. You know, people in the network come down, pick me up, very graciously brought me into to their motel rooms. Um, you know, I'm, I'm extremely appreciative of that. You know, but that's how that's how this network works. You know, people actually get out here and doing things. Not just sitting around Facebook land, talk about all the good shit they're going to do or all the bad stuff they're going to do and all that. They're actually out here, you know. Um, you know, yeah, I know, I'm going to hear all kinds of excuses and whining and, you know, my dog broke his pecker and, you know, my wife keeps her balls in her purse. I got it. I, I know. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, here I am. I'm in the room. Uh, relaxing, trying to warm up, and spending two hours on the asphalt, on the cold asphalt, 10 degree weather, and handcuffs, yeah, I'm chilled, I'm cold to the bone, you know, but here it is, you know, I'm tired of all the rumors, tired of all the gossip, and bullshit, you know, uh, he was gunned down, no, I don't know if he was gunned down, and hell, I was there, you know, I know he took off, I know he drove that way, I know he let him, he let him on a pursuit, um, I don't know what happened up there. But you know something? I was up here while all the rest of you weren't. So don't put speculation out there. Don't put nonsense out there. You know, yeah, the rest of the guys are still in custody. I'm out. They don't have nothing on me. Because I do a damn good job of keeping myself unknown. You know, the biggest thing against those guys is all the stuff they put on social media. It's the second time I've seen where these cases are, are evolving around people and what they post on social media. Yeah, you get your first moment rights. You guys got the right to be stupid, I guess. All right. Um, <clears throat> you know, I've seen a, a, a thing now that you know I must be a fat or whatever. No, I'm just I'm just smarter than your average retarded bear, and a lot smarter than your average conspiracy theorist. All right. So, if y'all got any questions, you ask me. I'll make another video. I'll answer your questions. Until then, stop the speculation. Get to business. We need to have work to do here. All right? Let's not let LaVoy's, you know, death die in vain. Be in vain. Yeah, it was tragic. You know, like I said, I, I, I really, you know, really got attached to the old man. I mean, the, the fire he had in him, the life he had in him, was just phenomenal. But we got to make it work. We got shit to do. Good night. I don't see the car in front. No, yeah, it's right over there. See him? Let's go. I'm going to get out of the car. Where? Right there. He's right there. Oh, there he is. Okay. Yeah.
were on the gr you were driving your jeep yeah I was and uh, Ammon was in the back correct and Brian was in the front yeah and so you guys get out of your car and right. they handcuff all three of you and then um so then and when the boy stopped like Brian came out of the car but you you were you didn't see them shoot at Brian and the truck correct we heard a shot We sat there on the asphalt for two hours. And then where did you go from there? Well, after they went up, after the sheriff's van went up and picked the two girls up, they brought the two girls back, loaded all of us, uh, well, that time would be the six of us, into the sheriff's transport van, <clears throat> brought us back down through Burns, and then once we got to Burns is where Hammond made the phone call, because his phone was on the inside jacket pocket, and Victoria sat next to him, and then Pete <laughs> sat here, and Brian and I sat behind him, and Sean sat behind us. So that's where Am made his phone call. And then once we got west of Burns, there's a rest area probably 12 miles out, 15 miles out. That's where they split us up, put us in FBI vehicles. Then those guys went to Portland and they brought me and Victoria back to the sheriff's station. Why would they bring you back? Why would they bring you back? Because I got And so what they told me, they told me the bottom line is all they got on me is trespass. I wasn't there when it was taken over. I didn't throw I'm not on film destroying nothing. I'm not on film talking about killing federal officers. Uh, I didn't raise any money to go there, and I didn't bring anybody with me. Which is how they nailed O'Shaughnessy and Pete Santilli, because Pete Santilli put out a call to arms for people to come up there. O'Shaughnessy, every day, was asking for was donations. O'Shaughnessy? Joe O'Shaughnessy. Okay. Uh, he, he was, he was going to go to 14. Okay. He, 
he was going on Facebook every day asking for donations up there. Well, by what the feds are claiming is that's a criminal enterprise. So he's trying to give money for a criminal enterprise. I did none of that. But see, I did this. I did. I did what I tell all my people in Arizona. Shut the fuck up. Mm -hmm. So are you fuck. from Arizona? Yeah. Uh, so did you? Who did you know before you went up to the refuge? Payne, Ritzheimer, Blink Cooper. All those guys are from. Well, Payne's from Montana. The rest of the guys are from Arizona. So okay. So you just went up there to kind of help out, or? The first time I went up there was because there was a 27 year old girl with a five month old baby up there that I went there to go get. Oh, is that your girlfriend? No. Oh, okay. Just a friend. Just a friend. She's part of the Arizona. Using her truck for supply runs. And Kristen, Who was using her truck? He was the refuge. Oh, okay. Then Kristen being young didn't want to. 27? You know, 27. With a five, and she took her five month old baby up? Yes, ma'am. And why'd she do that? She went up there originally for the protest, is what she's told me. Uh huh. And she didn't realize that they were going to take the refuge. But once they took the refuge, they were, that's originally they were using her truck, I guess, to go back and forth and get supplies. So did she. Why would she stay there? She doesn't want to be there. You ever deal with mob mentality? You ever deal with what? You ever deal with mob, yeah, mob mentality? No. When you're the one person that wants to leave against town? Some people don't want to rock that boat. She's got a five month old baby, so she felt You know what? As a, I gotta say, I'm a mom. I have two beautiful grown daughters and four beautiful grandkids. And, you know, as a mother, your, your first instinct is to protect that child. So and that's she, a. And she did by do by her taking her getting placed in town with a family, a local family, uh -huh. was how she felt she was protecting the baby the most. So she could afford to drive up there with this five month old baby, feed this baby, I, I, and hang out. Yeah, and this is your friend, right? You're asking me why. Well, right, okay, I'm just, you know, this is your friend that you went to rescue. And um, she's, a, she's somebody that, like I said, she's somebody that does protests in South Arizona. Right, okay. I know more of her than her. So when. Who? How did you get your Jeep back? Well, after they ripped it apart, they gave it back to me about 3 o'clock Wednesday afternoon. And they left Ammon's stuff with you? They left this cowboy hat in a briefcase with you? They were still on the Jeep in there. And they didn't go, they didn't take it? Well, they took his brief. they took his computer. They took his laptop? Yeah. But they left his briefcase? Correct. And his hat? Correct. In your truck? Yes. And now where do you live? to be out there for more than a minute or two. Companies run trucks. Okay. Maintenance shops, fixtures. Okay, so you own a truck. Okay, so you have truck drivers that run things through the country? I have seen, yeah. Okay. Okay. So you kind of went up there to help and then kind of stayed for the cause? or? Well, the first time I went up there to see what was going on. Uh -huh. And to get Chris. Uh huh. And right now. Together? Yeah. And you brought her back? Well, from about 
after the holidays till about tax time, drive in freight really starts slowing down because people don't want to spend money. They've already spent a lot of money for the holidays and waiting for taxes. And uh, I haven't had much work. So uh, I got them all the pain and asked if he needed help up there. And he said yes. And that was the first, like, interaction with Ammon Bundy you had, was when you no, went up? No, the first up. time I was up there, too. I hung around with Ammon. They dry and me with Ammon during the day. Because when I you were picking up Kristen? Yeah, because I had a route in town. Okay. So, the first time I went up, I got up there late Tuesday night and left out on Friday morning. So, I spent two days there. With, and you and Kristen left together? Yeah. She stayed up on my top. Okay. She didn't stay up on my By the time I got up there, she had already been shipping down with that family in town. They had families like hosting people? Yeah, more or less. So she was out of the mob mentality in with a family. Why wouldn't she get in her car and drive away? I mean, it just kind of seems a little strange. Yeah, you know? except her car is 35 miles away. You're going to walk that far in 12 degree weather with a five month old baby? No, so she left her car up at the refuge? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. She's kind of she's kind of timid. When, I guess. You know, I, that, you know why I find that really difficult to believe? Because you ain't timid being a protester, and you ain't timid hanging out with cowboys doing that. So that's like, I gotta tell you, I'm sure she's your friend, but that all as a I female, can, all that's All I can not, tell I'm you is what it. she told me. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm just telling you, I ain't buying that story. Well, so, um... Friend her on Facebook, and you can message her again. No, story. thanks. So, so you have Aaron stuff now? Yeah, we do. Yeah. I need to let my dog out. He's still in the camera. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I saw your nine minute video and uh, I was quite disturbed about it. So I watched the video and. and uh, um, aren't you the one who put all the tweets and he was on his knees and shot in the face? No. I said he, he, got, he was murdered with his hands up. And guess what? He was. Okay. Yeah. So, and so I, I, I'm just really kind of amazed that you would put a nine minute video out contradicting yourself and saying that you couldn't see anything. And I clearly said that in the video. Right. Because, <laughs> because the reason why that video went out was somebody, and I, I can't remember, well, it was a woman that put, the vid, put a, a thing out before anybody came out saying that he was on his knees and shot in his face. Yeah, well, that's not what I said. Uh, I said, okay, the maybe, boy was murdered with his hands up. Okay. And that is exactly, and one thing I'm just gonna tell you, nicely, friendly, when I make a statement, if I'm wrong, great. If I'm right, I never back down. I'll double down, and, and I have doubled down on that. Because after viewing the statement and having um, authorities and special forces view, the, view that foot footage, and until the actual dash cams come out where they actually see they were trying to kill everyone in that truck for 12 minutes, just plowing bullets into it. And then if you actually look at the boy on the ground and how many times he was shot, the man was basically murdered in cold blood. And then you put out a nine minute video saying that didn't happen. No, I don't think I put, I don't think I said anything. I recounted exactly what I, what I seen, which matches what the FBI put up point where he drove off and after that as I say in my video I went off what Shauna Cox said so the hearsay okay so and if anybody took, takes hearsay took, as anybody if anybody takes hearsay as gospel yeah but why would you even do that because I was murdered. I was asked numerous times by numerous people to do it to combat some of the rumors of learning should I have done it no hence the reason why I put out the second video saying I should not have taken hearsay I should have not have taken somebody else's word and put it on a video. So, did you actually, on your second video, admit that he was shot with his hands up? Because that's what happened. I'm sure you saw the video, and I'm sure you being there can clearly verify that. I I recounted what I said in my video. As far as left, as far as that, I said in my second video that people can go watch the FBI footage and come to their own conclusions. So you really because there again, why? Okay, so. Listen, lady, I'm really not even bothered to even really get much into this with you. Right. Okay. Um, my first video, I used somebody else's words, and I shouldn't. Second well, you video. you really destroyed trust upon an American movement. 
because I can tell you, you are not welcome around the Bundys or this movement, period. Okay. Which I think that's what my text to him kind of said. I don't know what your text to him kind of said. So, I mean, as far as the movement goes, yeah. I'm not real concerned about it. Well, you know, obviously because until until I can get some of these big tough American mm -hmm. fucking patriots mm -hmm. down on the border with the rest of us mm -hmm. to work this border, mm -hmm. I'm not real concerned about it. So why'd you go up the second time? Because what I what I tell you. You told me you went up to save some damsel in distress, yeah, that the and then you time. went back. Yep. What I tell what I tell you, I went the second time. Because you didn't have any work and you had time. What else? That's what I heard. Now, yeah, I told you more than that. Okay. B what was it? I've already told you. Okay, good. So, so, thank you for coming and getting this stuff. Appreciate it. Nice meeting you guys. Welcome back. In this segment, I talked to both Ammon and Ryan Bundy about their time with Lavoie Finicum and the death that took place in Oregon. When you think back about the day with Lavoie, do you ever wonder about if, what would happen to you if you were in the car with him? Um, I haven't really thought that because I wasn't, but I know that if I would have made one twitch that was wrong, I would have been dead. There's, uh, there's no doubt in my mind uh, that whether, you know, I, I believe that those young soldiers, because that's what they are, we have a standing army right in the middle of our own na nation, that they were hyped up with lies about how, uh, you know, dangerous we were and all the other things that, that they had been told. And they expected us to, to be violent and to retaliate, which would have never been what we had done. Have you ever seen the videotape of Lavoie's death? I have. When you watch that, what goes through your mind? Well, I, I know that Lavoie saved lives without doubt. He saved the lives of the other people in the truck. He also saved the lives of, uh, life of the officer that, that, that ran in front of him. Um, and and, um, and Lavoie has, a, I mean, he was a great man that had done nothing but good for over 50 years his whole life. And I saw them just cut him down like he was a violent criminal. I want you to take me step by step because everybody has watched this video. You're driving along. What, what made you stop? Roadblock. Well, the roadblock was, 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 was far ahead. Sure, we, we, we stopped. Did, did they put the lights on and pull you over? Um, well, I was in the back seat. I couldn't see lights myself, but I believe so that there were some lights. And so for some reason, Lavoie decided to pull over. We didn't pull over. We stopped. You stopped. You stopped. And Ammon's truck was behind you. Yes. Um, okay. And so, how did it wind up happening that Ammon's truck didn't continue with you when you guys decided to move forward? The driver was a paid FBI agent, or at least paid by the FBI, and he had done the whole setup, and he was the driver, and that's why he didn't keep going, I assume. So, so the driver in Ammon's car? Yes, was a paid operative. Was a paid operative. I've seen the video. You were, you were sitting there for a while. In fact, you said the words, we should have never stopped. You know what? We were being shot at upon initially stopping. That's where I was going to ask you. So, so when, you would, when you stopped... You got shot at, or you got shot at prior to stopping? Well, I think we stopped first, and then we got shot at. How many times? Um, I'm certain of one. I'm not certain about a second shot, but um, I know that one shot was fired. For one, sure. one shot was fired. And so that was when you were sitting in the back of the truck, you're waiting. Lavoie is talking to them through his rearview mirror, in a way, saying, uh, you know, we're going to go meet the sheriff, we're going to meet the sheriff, what have you. You guys are sitting there. And then you decide to make the move forward. Mm -hmm. You were shot, correct, in your shoulder? 
Were you shot at that point, that one shot? No, you were shot back in the snowbank. Yes. Okay. So now when you're driving and you're driving down that, the, uh, the road and you see that there is a, uh, a dead kill or a dead stop or whatever they call that, um, roadblock. a roadblock, but they, there's a name for it. So there's a roadblock there and you see that. Um, what are you thinking? I'm not going to comment on that. Okay. <clears throat> when you see that Lavoie goes off into the left bank, mm -hmm. immediately he jumps out of the car. What was your first thought? Well, I knew that they were intent on killing. They were already firing shots at us before we ever got to that point. And uh, they continued to fire shots at us as we stopped. And then as he started to get out of the vehicle, they were firing shots at us. That's when I got hit. I did not want Lavoie to exit the vehicle. I figured they would just kill him. Um, I believe that he was hit at that point of trying to exit the vehicle. I wanted to reach in and pull him back in, but I, I felt that I shouldn't. Um, Why? I felt that he needed to do what he needed to do, and I felt that he already knew what he needed to do, and it wasn't my place to put stop to that. God directs our lives a lot if we will listen. So you believe that God told him to get out of that car and do whatever he needed to do? I believe that he was prepared for what happened to him many days in advance. Do you believe as if uh, he got out of that car and attempt to try to save your life? Oh, absolutely. But, you know, it was more than that, but yes. When you got out of the truck and you saw that Lavoie was on the, uh, on the, in the snow, and at that point you saw he was motionless and figured he was dead, did you think you were next? Could have been easily. Do you wish you would have pulled him back in? It wouldn't have worked. They were they were gunning for us. They were planning on shooting us up no matter what. I mean, why you know why else did why else did I get shot? You know, they that was their design was to kill us, and that we're just lucky we made that through.